So now we're moving on to one of my highly anticipated moments of this whole conference. We have a live Q&A discussion panel with the one, the only, the legend, Brendan Burns, the co-founder of Kubernetes open source project. I can't believe <laughs> I have this guy here with us. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, thank you very much for joining us. I'm really happy you're here with us. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Domi to kick us off. Amazing. Thank you so much. And Brendan, well, please, thank you so much for joining us. Normally you would get like a standing ovation and all that kind of stuff, but in this case you have to do it with me. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I can handle it. So um, let me uh, kick off with the first question because we have limited time. Uh, so HCS is currently in public beta. Could you tell me a bit more about the story behind its creation and how Microsoft and HashiCorp came together to build this? Sure. Um, so, you know, I think that one of, one of the things that's always been really important to me is this idea that our cloud can't be successful unless we have partners who can be successful uh, on Azure. Um, and so a big part of what my team has been doing for a long time has been building infrastructure to try and make it easier for people to deliver services uh, on top of Azure. Um, and you know, I've known the HashiCorp folks uh, for a really long time um, and really you know, uh, appreciated both the great the software that they've built, the great communities that they build around their software. Um, and so it was just a natural fit to come together and uh, help build a, a console service that can be used with the Azure Kubernetes service or with Azure VMs um, and really deliver something that worked great for, for both our shared customers. So it was a really fantastic opportunity. And I'm really grateful to them as well because um, you know, they've helped us a lot too and given us a ton of feedback about, you know, what has worked well and what has, you know, our areas that we could improve the service. So um, it, it's, it's just been a fantastic partnership. Really happy with it. You know what they say, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the community, there is a lot of talk about the operational complexity with Kubernetes. Could you share us your thoughts on how users may find ways to make that easier? Yeah, I mean, I think we would always recommend people run a managed Kubernetes. It's just easier, right? Um, in fact, actually, just over this last weekend, I um, I thought to myself, oh, you know what? I'll, uh, I was running Debian 9. I have a cluster in my house, and I was running Debian 9 on the cluster. And I thought, well, you know, it's getting a little old. I guess I should upgrade to Debian 10. And, um, you know, uh, eight hours later, my cluster was finally operational again. Um, and I think that that gives you an example of like all the little things that can go wrong that you don't necessarily anticipate or expect to go wrong. And so when you're thinking about a managed service, whether it's for uh, Kubernetes uh, as with the Azure Kubernetes service or with uh, the, the console service on Azure, um, the great thing is you have people who their, their primary job is to help you with things like that, is to, to automatically take care of an upgrade for you um, and and let you focus on building your application. So I think like any other, I mean, really any piece of software, if you can get somebody else to, to take responsibility for it, that's probably the right thing to do so that you can focus on, you know, your core, your core business application. Cause I'm not going to sit down and write your app, your, your business application for you. I can't, I can't do that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that's the great thing about the, the managed service. It takes away all that complexity for you. It lets you focus on, um, the building of the application, which can e be equally complicated, but of course is, is a task for the customer. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. It's uh, if it's for yourself at home, it's one thing to spend eight hours on, but if that means that you can't actually do the thing that you want to do in an operational environment at work, then yeah, it's just a lot to say for managed services like that. Um, just to double check, cause I'm assuming there's going to be some questions from the audience. Rob, have we got anything for, uh, Mr. Burns? Uh, unfortunately, nothing's come through, which is really, really strange to me. Um, but I'm sure it will come through. If you do have any questions uh, for Brendan or for anything related to HCS on Azure, uh, please do get those questions in and I will do my best to ask Brendan directly for you. Uh, back to you, Dummy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, next question I would like to ask you is, so what do you, where do you think uh, the future of Microsoft and HashiCorp uh, working together what, is, what does that look like in your opinion? Uh, well, I think we're going to continue. Obviously, we're going to get the, the console service up to GA. 
um, you know, but also collaborate around things like Terraform. Um, we have a ton of I, a ton of people who are, you know, use Terraform as their solution for um, uh, managing their applications, especially in hybrid environments where they're you know, potentially managing things on premise as well as in the cloud. Um, I'm really excited about Azure Arc, which is sort of our way of extending the Azure control plane uh, to be able to manage devices that are not in Azure, but are on-premise. So be able to manage that Kubernetes cluster that's in my basement, for example. Uh, and of course, because it's the Azure control plane, um, you can use Terraform to, to manage that. So now I can potentially use, uh, use Terraform or any other kind of tool to manage this cluster that's in my basement. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but as I said, it's always just been a really great partnership um, and, and a great collaboration. And so, you know, I don't, there, I'm sure there's other stuff that the future will bring. Um, uh, and I'm just excited to be able to, to hang out and work with people to help our joint customers. Amazing. I, I feel the, the feeling is mutual. So you mentioned a few things about your home lab. What else do you have in your home lab? <laughs> what else do I have? Um, well, I have a, uh, a bunch of like sensors. I kind of have a bunch of these like, it turns out I, I hadn't done Arduino for a long time, but you can buy these like wi Wi-Fi enabled Arduino chips for like eight bucks. They're incredibly cheap um, and attach like temperature and humidity and all that kind of thing. So I kind of went nuts with that and um, have a bunch of those sensors plugged in uh, around the house and outside. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, have like the control for the Wi-Fi network is running on that cluster too and things like that. So, I mean, it's, it's hobby for sure. Um, there weren't <laughs> a lot of customers who, were, when I had an eight hour downtime, there weren't a lot of customers who were upset at me. Um, uh, fortunately the Wi-Fi was still working. So the rest of my family was not upset at me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a good way to kind of keep your hand in. Yeah. Cool. Well, I hope it's not just a lockdown uh, hobby. Um, I think we finally got some questions in. So throwing it back to Rob to ask you some audience questions. Thank you very much. Again, just like London buses, wait for ages mm -hmm. and loads come through at the same time. Right. <laughs> so uh, the well. first question is, <laughs> is the variety of console in HCS the FL slash open source version or does it include console enterprise features? I think that's a really good question. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it, that you can bring your uh, enterprise subscription to the to the console service. Um, you know, I think most of what we focus on from the Azure perspective is um, it's sort of delivering the infrastructure that helps it helps it be delivered. Um, the HashiCorp team are the ones who are sort of responsible for bringing the the, the service um, and the, the characteristics of the uh, of the software. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, there's obviously the different layers, just like the shared responsibility model, um, essentially. Yeah, um, so exactly. Just kind of translating that. So yeah, makes perfect yeah. sense. Okay, so we have another question, uh, which is, where can I find guidance on installing console on AKS? So I don't think this is specifically about HCS as a managed service. I think it's more about sure. bringing in their own console to AKS. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, AKS is just Kubernetes. Um, so any um, any instructions you find out there about how to run console on Kubernetes will work uh, on AKS. I do know, however, that you know in the the console docs, there's some great docs about how to um, hook up uh, console connect with AKS uh, as a service mesh. Um, and as I was we were talking about earlier, um, you know, although obviously you can run console on top of AKS, there's a lot of good reasons for running it as a managed service as well. Um, so if you now, I definitely, if you're going down that route, it's always easier, I think, to click a couple things or run a command on the command line and have a managed service running for you. But um, obviously, you know, any instructions you can you can find to, and I and I know there's some out there on HashiCorp site about how to run console on Kubernetes, so those will work with AKS. Brilliant. Yeah, I have to agree with that. If you can sort of abstract away the complexity and make that someone else's responsibility, ultimately your life will always be a lot easier going forward. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have another question. Uh, this is a newbie question. Um, and there's an apology in there, but you don't need to be sorry. Uh, I'm brand new to console and have a Kubernetes slash vault background. Why should I use console and why should I use it on Azure? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, 
console uh, on Azure is a part of building a broader application on on Azure. So you know we think we have a really great cloud platform. Um, I don't think you would necessarily just run console. I think you're going to run you know our use our uh, cognitive services, use our Kubernetes service, use our database services, and to as a environment in which you build your application. Um, console is really great for uh, sort of into integrating um, different services together with authentication and service discovery. So um, it, for example, would be, let's say you have a database um, and it's maybe even an on-premise database, um, but you want to build a cloud native application in Kubernetes. Uh, you want that to be secure. You want to be able to transit network traffic across in a secure way from an in the cloud Kubernetes cluster to an on-premise database where you know, staying on data premise for legacy reasons or whatever. Um, the console service is fantastic at doing that sort of thing, right? It's really uh, a really great way to sort of bridge between services implemented in different environments or inside the same Kubernetes environment if you need um, TLS security uh, or anything else that a service mesh can provide for you. Um, so I think that's, that's why you would look at it um, in general. And then obviously, you know, we believe that Azure is a great platform for building applications and pulling together not just console, but all of the other kinds of services that are available on Azure. Amazing. Thank you very much. And we have one last question from the uh, audience. Uh, any ideas if there are plans for Nomad in Azure 2 uh, as a managed service? Uh, you know, we don't have any current plans, but of course, uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why we build this general platform is, um, you know, to enable people to deliver whatever software they want, right? So um, we don't necessarily, you know, put up rules about put about rules about what can, what can be run as part of our managed applications platform. Um, and we have a lot of customers who come along and uh, deliver their applications through that managed applications platform. Um, and so, you know, if if it turns out there's the customer desire there, we always, you know, we always listen to the customer. And uh, if the, the, it makes sense to do, obviously we enjoy the partnership. And so it'd be a, a fun thing to do. Amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'm going to throw it back to my co-host, Domi.